good morning friends so today again we are going to embolize bilateral varicocele in a young male but today the case has unusual left sided origin in the sense there is a large azygous vein arising from left renal vein so I am starting here you see I have already gone in the puncture of uh, right femoral vein and with my sheath and RC2 I am already ready to hook the left renal vein for left testicular veins then. So as I pass my wire there is some tendency to go towards right but then again I will give it little talk and push to get it into the left renal vein so this is how I do it see it's a little difficult but see now I'll rotate it towards left one while my uh, you know, it, it, it has a tendency to jump out but you see now I'll just turn it towards renal vein yeah that's the turning I'm doing and then I'm in so this is the first easy hooking but as soon as I hook I find out that there is no way downwards and in fact it is going upwards taking turn so I realize that this must be an azygous vein but then we have to search that's azygous vein left paraspinal so I have to explore to find testicular vein now you see when I take a strong run I find it's all azygous no testicular veins no spermatic veins from there so I had to explore a little bit more. This patient has bilateral high-grade varicoceles on ultrasound and he's suffering. He's, he's, he's come from very far off. And uh, so it's unusual but not that uncommon. So we try to search with RC2, you know, it's a double curve then because the guiding woolen sheath we take has a, you know, downward curve and then there is RC2 through it. So we get a 360, uh, I mean, almost uh, 180 degree turn, almost, I should say, not that. But then it's difficult to explore the areas which are right adjacent to the osteo of renal vein. So for that, some other case, sim would be better, but then because testicular veins are a little away from ostia, from the inferior wall, so we can take this assembly and try to get it. So I'm trying to explore more, but it's always that big zygous communication which we are seeing. We get it. Again, you see the wire is going through it. So if there's a smaller uh, testicular vein arising from left renal vein. Then that's very difficult to hook because all the time it goes into a zygus, which is very large. So we try, you know. Now, okay, we take a strong run of a zygus through sheath, but then we see there's nothing, just the zygus communications, number veins, and the communication with the IVC. That's all we are seeing. We are not seeing any testicular weight at all. So now we decide to, you know, take form a sim. This is the RC2, and we form a sim to explore the osteal region close by area. That's the sim. Sim two. From this, I can explore the more proximal area. Yeah, there. This gives a downward turn. Yeah, there. But I am not finding any. Let's club it again. This is the zygous system I'm entering once I go, but then I'm trying to find out some reflux into some other ostia which we're not finding. So, finally, you know, we try to come out of left renal vein and you know, try to see the right sided first. Then that was relatively high grade as well, so we found it. So we take a run. 
So this case we are embolizing the right uh, testicular vein. Yeah, this one. See, it's a high grade uh, medical seal there. Right testicular vein before uh, left one. So right one we have hooked. We have demonstrated with the contrast. And uh, that's the varicose seal, right sided. The contrast you see can always you know, grade it on this, but then if you tell the patient to push with Valsalva, you might be able to see more, more reflux. So the bladder is full. So as usual, we inject some sclerosant mixed with lipidol and uh, contrast. Gaurav is there with me. He is very handy. You see. So once the sclerosant mixed with lipidol and uh, glue is instilled, after that we, you know, glue embolize the proximal vein and uh, we do it quite close to the ostia to you know counter any uh, co collateral systems or duplications or double vein or third third vein so that it's a permanent cure you see that's what we're doing, so I, when I'm doing, I have to check the reflux all the time. Yeah. So that's my glue. So that's the blue, blue column, a good one. Yeah, see, that slowly it comes up. And I withdraw my diagnostic catheter and the micro catheter. There. Now, once right side is completed, I'm into left side again to explore it. And this time I have taken a longer Picard, which gives me an acute curve to explore unexplored areas, you know, the distal ones now. So it's longer and it gives me all. So this is the gastro or reno, leno renal one we could demonstrate the upper portion. Now I'm going to turn down and now I have found the ostia of testicular wind right next to the zygus, immediately distal to the zygus. In fact, almost sharing the common. Uh, so there you see common origin with the uh, azygous vein and I have found it in a couple of I mean most of the cases when there is an azygous large or small in the left renal vein I find this quite adjacent to it immediately distal to it immediately distal sh almost sharing the ostia so there see now I demonstrate a high grade varicose look at it it's so big and there is so much reflux so there's hardly any spasm. So we're going to instill again a mixture of lipid oil. Yeah. Scrozen. That's how I make it. Mix it nicely with a three-way. Yeah. So it's done good. Gaurav is instilling it. Now we have catheterized the bladder also, it took some time off for catheterizing and so that's the sclerosin going, you see, the, tes the testicular veins are filling the left one, right one there is already staining there, but left one is bigger, grade 4 type of thing and after instilling sclerosin, 
mixture we're putting in micro catheter and once the micro catheter is in place once it's in place we'll start injecting uh, glue slowly drop by drop to form a good column and you know the proximal veins will be occluded with glue to produce a BRTO like effect now micro catheter is in place so that's my job now to inject glue see patient is happy you see you can see him he has no trouble at all and he's uh, relaxing and watching without without anesthesia no? only the we give them some tranquilizer I mean we give them some um, Clonacy BAM to make them a little calmer, but we don't need too much of anesthesia here. It's a painless procedure. And uh, and uh, what's happening now is uh, I'm injecting glue slowly and micro catheter. Yeah, that's the column coming up. Yes, that's a dark one that you know it is a column. So slowly I will withdraw my uh, diagnostic catheter. So it's a triaxial system here. On right side it was biaxial. Now it's triaxial. So what we are doing is slowly making a column upwards. So the concentration and the patient is relaxed, you know. That's whatever column no, no, that the triaxial system and so normally we load with a little bit of hydrocot and avel in case there is some allergic reaction so that is taken care of and slowly my glue column is coming up discussion with Gaurav is always a treat Normally, glue inductions are a little intense and, you know, we don't uh, communicate much there. We, by and large, do it slowly and with a lot of concentration. Yeah, so there. Completed. And thank you for watching. Thank you.